We look at now the Arthur kinematic motion. What that means is actually the motion between articular surfaces. If you look at Mr. Scapula here, shoulder, as in the red, that is supraspinatus. As you all know, supraspinatus is from the supraspinous fossa to the greater tubercle. It does abduction, okay? Innervated by the suprascapular nerve. What I'm showing you here is that when you abduct, that supraspinatus is being engaged, right? But the humerus is being engaged from an osteokinematic, arthrokinematically, the, the supraspinatus is being engaged, okay? So those are the two differences from a visual point of view and anatomical. So important to know the two. When we look as therapist people with injuries, I'm assessing someone in, who's in pain. Typically, they're in pain, they can't move. But a joint needs to be free if it's stuck or if it's stiff or if it's moving too much. It has to be free restrictions. If it's moving too much, we go right to stability. As personal trainers and fitness professionals, you most likely are more people who are probably stiff and who are tight. You want to stretch them. We are going to do joint mobilizations, which are going to mobilize one joint surface on another, not manipulate, to restore mobility so that the motion occurs naturally. So they can fully flex, abduct their arm, for example. Fully extend or flex their knee. Fully extend or flex their hip. So they can tie that into running, sprinting, climbing stairs, getting on a chair. Common functionalities. Where the stability part comes in is to create co-contraction between the weaker front muscles and the extensors, or in layman's term, this whole pelvic girdle, which you'll learn more about. Okay? We then can go to control mobility. Again, this is physical therapy school terminology, and for you at home, I'm explaining in layman's term and more of your clients to understand this is how you progress clients. As you can see in the picture, a lunge would be control mobility because you have to engage your abdominals, your TVA, both the quad and the opposite hamstring glute to create stability to contract the muscle. Going on to the bottom, skill. Skill is a high level exercise. That's yours truly. That's me doing quadruped, which I'll demonstrate for you at home and all of you here today on physio ball. For those of you who've never done it, you may get your first chance and try. It is very hard. That exercise is dynamic. Great for, not truly a Tom Brady, but someone high level, an athlete of course. I wouldn't put a mom on there or someone who's 65, someone who's got a fear of balance issues. They would fall. So, why is this important? If you think of the body in those motions and movements, we go from mobility to stability to controllability to skill. This is how we train our clients. This is how I train or teach or rehab my patients. If you think like that, it makes this whole training regime in you a better trainer, okay? Cervical spine, again, rotation. Primarily in the upper cervical area, again, the subcranial, which is C1, C2, these areas up here. Again, rotation side bending occurs in the facets. That's the number of the normal osteokinematic motion that occurs. We look at page 57, which is the spine again. You're looking at the spine. You can see in the picture there, when you bend forward and backwards, there is compression and tension in the lumbar sacral region. With particularly flexion, what's happening to the facets and to the vertebral bodies? And can anyone tell me? What is happening to the vertebral bodies when you flex your spine? Contract. Well, not only contracting, they're moving up, they're flexing, they're, they're, they're opening, they're widening, okay? What's happening to the disc in the center, remember? Compressing. Correct, excuse me? Compressing. No, it's actually pushing up oh, pushing posterior. Up. Yeah. It's putting tension. When you extend the spine, arch your back, the disc is going to go forward biomechanically. Do you all see that? Does that make sense? <clears throat> For you at home, so again, flexion, you're getting a gapening widening, the disc is going to be pushed by mechanically backwards towards this part, which is your bottom. When you extend, there's closure. You can see compression or approximation of the bones that will push the disc forward. Now, what typically happens with back injuries is you get a rotation and side bending, 
And what that does, see that red thing right there? You at home? That's a disc bulge. That's a disc bulge. Disc injuries typically occur with rotation and side bending. My belief, based on science and research, I don't train anyone, any client, any personal training client, physical therapy client, in rotation and side bending because it is a coupled motion. A coupled motion, you are putting the structure at risk for injury. Does that make sense? I'll repeat that. Rotation, side bending, you do not want to train a client. Example would be with a cable, right? A cable. There's no need to do that, but rotation is fine. You can do diagonal, a D1, or pulling down is fine. You're moving in one plane. When you do the couple motion, just like the neck, you're putting the disc in facet for risk for injury. I see that a lot. People lifting fun something functionally at home on the floor. You can blow a disc, a herniated disc, by picking up a pen, a, pe a paper towel, a handkerchief. It can happen, I've seen it. You don't need to lift heavy weight. It's a fallacy, okay? So I'll make sure you understood that.